Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, Unstay. welcome to a brand new video. Once again, it's sort of a short vlog from the beautiful city of Moscow. In today's video, guys, I came to a park here in Moscow, in a center, which is pretty much the most anti-Soviet park you will get in anywhere across Russia. You know, we in Russia love to talk about how, you know, there are a lot of parks are uh, very Soviet still, you know, a lot of Soviet monuments and stuff like that. Well, in the center of Moscow, there's one park that is perhaps the least Soviet, or I guess the most Soviet in a way as well. It's a park which is called Museon, uh, which is located here in the center, and the idea is that essentially this park is full of rejected Soviet monuments from back in the day, which have no place in modern Russia, or it had no place in the Soviet Union after Stalin, let's say. And essentially it's just this park that is full of reject statues from all of the place, and uh, I think the good, the good place to start for us, the first thing to check out, is actually a statue of uh, Joseph Stalin right here, which is something you would not see very often, you know, because when uh, Nikita Khrushchev came into power, you know, after Stalin, he did a massive campaign to sort of de-Stalinize the nation and to remove the cult of personality of Stalin and expose a lot of the crimes he committed, you know, the entire Gulag system, etc. And, you know, this is what a Stalin statue would have looked like back in the day, albeit he does not have a nose. We can see right here that this statue was made in 1938, which is obviously uh, was, you know, the height of Stalin's rule, you, I guess you could say, before the Second World War even. And here you can see this entire sort of installation is actually a uh, sort of a monument made in the 90s in memory of the victims of Stalinist repressions. So. If you guys have the question whether, you know, the Russian government allows sort of any criticism of Stalin's repressions in the wild like this, well, I guess the answer is yes. Now this statue right here, I thought this was some sort of Chad version of Lenin or something. I mean, look at that haircut, incredible. But turns out this is actually a statue of a uh, another Soviet sort of uh, revolutionary whose name is Sverdlov. I see some more very, very Soviet stuff ahead of me right here though, so let's go and check that out. I know there's like a Lenin graveyard of rejected Lenin statues somewhere in here. And yeah, there's also this entire area which is just full of uh, sort of modern sculptures and it's pretty cool as well. You can like walk through here and uh, look at all of them. They don't really have a Soviet theme, it's just more of like random themes of uh, Christianity and like Greek mythology, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, if you love sculptures and art, this place is a must visit in Moscow. And here we are walking into the sort of Soviet graveyard, I guess you could say. First of all, we're greeted by a nice statue of Mr. Lenin right here, which you can touch, uh, made of granite. Handsome man, very handsome man, I like that. Then there's also uh, Karl Marx, yes, there you go. The man, the man himself, the legend, you know. <laughs> Socialism is when no iPhone, guys. He's the one who said that in his uh, famous book, Das Kapital. Make sure you guys remember that. Here we have another one, which is actually a statue of Brezhnev, uh, another, you know, Soviet leader who uh, is a legend in the eyes of many Soviet people because the times of Brezhnev were kind of, uh, they were thought of as a stable time in the Soviet history when everybody kind of had a good life and everything. And I've actually never seen a single Brezhnev statue either, ever, in any Russian city. So I guess this is kind of a, something that is a, a bit of a reject as well, which is never, you know, in any modern city it's all been taken down another one of Brezhnev he looks kind of uh, he looks kind of Chinese in this one if I'm not gonna lie <laughs> and here we are coming into the Lenin graveyard I guess you could say uh, this is awesome okay first of all I have a little two busts of uh, you know Stalin right here pretty cool another another Lenin really kind of you know human size I guess his head is the same so oh it's kind of shaky I don't know <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I should touch these to be honest. I don't want to ruin any monuments. I don't, I don't want to get like, you know thrown out of this park. So let's just stop doing that. Essentially, the idea for this park, as far as I understand, is that a lot of these statues were not deemed appropriate by the Soviet sort of officials. So, for example, if you look at this Lenin right here, his head is kind of too wide. It, it really looks like uh, kind of iffy. I'm not gonna lie. In a lot of Russian cities, you know, pretty much every Russian city has a Lenin statue still to this day on the very uh, you know main square of the city, and a lot of those don't even look right either. But for some reason. These are the statues that were not considered like worthy enough or a good depiction of Lenin. Uh, so they were just, you know, uh, sort of uh, thrown away and then they were found and put in this park. And uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, this one is a Jan Lenin right here. This one looks pretty good, to be honest. If you've seen pictures of Jan Lenin, looks exactly like him. I don't really see why would they, they would complain about this. This is a drip Lenin right here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, so I found some sort of booklet here that says <laughs> This says uh, please bury me uh, signed by Lenin if you guys don't know what this is about is essentially about the mausoleum 
you know that the Red Square, you know, the center of Moscow has the uh, mausoleum of Lenin in which the mummified body of, the, of Lenin is still housed and uh, there's a big movement in Russia for, you know, Lenin's body to be removed from that because, you know, it doesn't really make sense anymore. Buried in the main square of our, like, new country, right? It's not the Soviet Union anymore. So I guess this is basically somebody tried to do a little bit of a social commentary and left a note uh, next to this uh, rejected Lenin statue. I like it. And here we are, we have a... Uh, <laughs> this is beautiful. Okay, this is beautiful. Amazing. What does it say? Uh, SSSR Aplot Mira. So it says like the USSR is sort of the hope of the world or I guess the uh, basis of the world or something the world can rely on. It's made out of metal. I guess it was a sort of a sign maybe that was on some sort of building. And uh, we have a giant Soviet coat of arms. You know guys, say what you want about the Soviet Union, but that this is a drip you coat of arms, okay? Especially when looking especially looking at it like, like this, close up. I love it. I guess the reason why I'm calling this the most anti-Soviet park you could find in all of Russia is because the way everything is sort of on display here is just very ironic. Because, you know, everything is located sort of, you know, in the center of Moscow, which is, you know, a capitalist hellscape. And uh, you kind of have these uh, sort of icons of Soviet uh, workers' rights and all this stuff that, you know, doesn't matter in the capitalist world, <laughs> I guess. And, you know, all these phrases about the socialism winning and USSR taking over the world and everything just seems very, very ironic. And the way kind of everything is just thrown in here kind of at random obviously shows that, you know, it, this used to be something people really cared about and now nobody does. And uh, I guess the entire, I guess that makes this the, the least Soviet park you could have, the most anti-Soviet park you could find in the entirety of Russia, in my opinion. Yan Lin? Are you Yan Lin? No, I'm uh, Barry Dillon. Uh, here we have our boy Pushkin, again another Soviet statue right here, uh, made of marble. Beautiful boy, beautiful sideburns, love him. You know guys, quite honestly, I'm kind of grasping the straws at this point because this park doesn't have that much Soviet stuff. Although, in front of me I do see one more monuments and I think there's a few more there. Essentially to explain the idea of this park right here, it's sort of a square that's uh, close to actually a very big art gallery here which is known as Tretyakovskaya and uh, this is actually the... there's actually two of these galleries in Moscow. The other one is located in a more sort of central location in a more historical building and that gallery is all about sort of classic uh, Russian art and stuff like that but this right, right here is actually more of uh, modern art, uh, art of the 20th century, a lot of Soviet art is in there. Um, I've never been there yet but I, I'm sure I will visit one day but nevertheless you know it's a pretty cool uh, Soviet building you can check out right here So yeah, this statue right here is actually for uh, another Soviet revolutionary named Felix Dzerzhinsky, who is, a, you know, a name uh, you pretty much should recognize if you come from uh, from some sort of uh, post-Soviet country, because the cult of personality in the USSR was insane. Everybody had, like every single revolutionary, had at least one street in a city named after them. And this boy definitely, you know, there's a few, there's streets named after, after him in Chelyabinsk. And I'm pretty sure that in, in, if you go to any Soviet or post-Soviet city in a post-Soviet country, you will have a Lenin street, you will have a Dzerzhinsky street, you will have a Orjenkidze street. Probably you would not have a Stalin street or anybody after Stalin, because that that's just kind of not cool, but you will have a Putin street in uh, Grozny in Chechnya. They have a Putin street there, so he said he has one street uh, named after him at this point. When now we do not know what's gonna come next. I love this, by the way, right here. This is a sort of uh, a monument in the name of the disarmament. So, uh, you know, you see a man sort of breaking a nuclear missile in half. And uh, this was made in 1987, so uh, I guess that would be the time of Gorbachev. And, uh, you know, you can clearly tell that the, the tensions in the world, or I guess the way the USSR, or like, you know, I guess Russia almost at that point was heading, was a bit different because a lot of people like to say Gorbachev was too Western-minded or whatever. But uh, he did make some steps for, towards nuclear the summer man and uh, tore down the Berlin Wall and stuff like that so there's a bunch of good stuff you could point out about Gorbachev and the possibility of that monument being created back in 1987 is one of them But you guys already might have noticed that there's something really, really big ahead of us. And this is actually the main thing. And I think it's pretty funny, the story of this monument right here. So let's go and check it out. Yeah. 
So the monuments we're actually looking at right now is a monument to one of the famous uh, Russian emperors, Pizza the Great. The thing is that uh, kind of everybody in Moscow, at least a, lot of, a huge part of this of the population of Moscow, absolutely hates this monument. The reason why is basically because this uh, monument was created by a Georgian-Russian uh, sculptor called Zorab Tsereteli, who's infamous because a lot of the Russian artists community or public absolutely hates his work and uh, he's kind of connected with like the Russian government or whatever they always give him money to create these sculptures because this actually apparently cost billions to build I mean it's gigantic it's ginormous right the funniest thing though that I forgot to say when I was vlogging is that apparently according to the Russian media the statue originally was supposed to be a statue of Christopher Columbus not Peter the Great and it was apparently was supposed to be either a gift or supposed to be sold to the United States or Spain or some Latin countries Latin American countries but nobody actually wanted it everybody thought it was hideous so they just installed it in Russia as Peter the Great the sculptor disagrees with this version but that's basically what everybody thinks this is but there's a few reasons why this uh, you know monuments in particular gets critiqued as well is because as you can see uh, you know Peter the Great first of all he's standing on top of a ship and he's standing on top of a bunch of Russian ships all of these have like the Russian naval fleet uh, you know uh, flags on them and also like, people say it doesn't really make sense because why would the Emperor be standing on top of his own ships it almost looks like he's kind of defeated his own army in a sense if you understand what I mean another reason why people complain about this monument is that uh, you know Peter the Great is actually the symbol I guess and actually the founder and the creator of St. Petersburg another city in Russia which is you know usually called the second capital of Russia not Moscow so you know it doesn't really make a lot of sense because Peter the Great is not related to Moscow in any way I don't think he really likes Moscow either so such a huge uh, monument of Peter the Great being stood in Moscow as opposed to St. Petersburg doesn't really make much sense and also a lot of reason why people, well, a lot of people you know complained about this monument is because it kind of you know people said that it ruins the uh, Moscow uh, skyline essentially because you know you have this sort of nice area it kind of resembles St. Petersburg to be honest this area because all the buildings are kind of on this of the same height and people say that essentially this nice uh, sort of view here was actually ruined by this gargantuan huge monument right there which kind of just sticks out and it just has just no reason being there so essentially basically what this is is that this place really really I mean this is the park we were just at you know so technically this uh, monument is not in on the territory of the park but I guess it fits as well because this is a monument that everybody trashes nobody likes it and they just like yeah let's just drop it here and you know it kind of fits in with the theme of the park because it's just a bunch of monuments that nobody needs and nobody wants and so they're like yeah for sure let's just uh <laughs> let's just dump this uh, huge monument that nobody likes in here as well i love it it's genius moscow's crazy man This actually place right here you can see in front of me is actually uh, used to be a old Soviet uh, candy factory, uh, Krasne Aktyabr, uh, Red October. I guess that's where Kanye got the name for the sneakers. <laughs> but yeah, now it's been turned into this sort of restaurant uh, space, and I think there's a university in there as well. So I guess it, you know it's uh, another example of how old Soviet architecture, old Soviet buildings are reused and uh, turned into something different. Anyways guys, I guess that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I kind of just wanted to show you this bizarre anti-Soviet park in the center of Moscow. So hopefully you did enjoy this little tour. If you guys did, please make sure to, you know, slap the like button. As always, uh, you know, donate to my Patreon, all that good stuff. Subscribe to my channel. I guess I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>